for anybody who didn't know, that ain't supposed to look that way. Them are supposed to be just nice, perfectly round holes. So this poor KW dumped its bed off the back with a load of rock on it. I gotta cut this whole assembly off and replace it. Here we go. For this particular action, I'll be using the regular old blue flame hacksaw and a wash tip. That way I can use the heat to my advantage as I search for stress fractures and the frame that may have been caused by that bed rolling off backwards. I'm gonna try to get some shots of it, but I can't promise nothing because I don't have a decent camera and my cell phone ain't gonna handle too much spatter. All right. I've got a good bit of that cut apart. I had to blow a little access hole here because I'm gonna have to just cut straight down through there with a straight tip and then finish getting the rest of this off because I ain't got room to get up in there and cut it the way I need to with the wash tip without getting burnt up and I've been burnt, it's not fun. So I'm gonna try to catch some more cutting for y'all. Unfortunately, that's about all I can get on video. I ain't got no angles for anything better, but basically all you do is you take your wash tip and you just start whittling at the end until you see the separation line between the frame and what you're trying to cut away from it. And you can kill this as much as you want to because you're replacing it. So you try to save the frame and you just work that little line all the way down through there and it separates. Done. I gotta cut the bottom yet, but you get the idea. <laughs> All right, now I got the biggest majority of it removed and got the last little piece off the driver's side. I just gotta finish washing the inside off on this passenger side piece, and then I can clean the frame up with my right angle milling machine, also known as a Dewalt grinder with a uh, four and a half inch flat disc. And once that's cleaned up, I can start fitting the new piece in. Now, as you can see, that's all cut, cleaned up, and ready for its new piece. All right, it's not exactly a state secret that I'm not a mathematical type person. So here we go. The new bed hinge is made a whole bunch different from the old bed hinge, but Oxbody says it'll work so here I have this problem. That's gonna be center line for the pin. And yeah, I just gotta cut all of that extra out. 
and I'd have room to put the new bed hinge in, then I'd set the bed on here and get doing all that. Yeah, well, just so y'all know, if you've never had the pleasure of using a Komatsu track hoe for a crane to reinstall the bed on a dump truck, then you have been missing out big time. This is just all kind of fun. You shouldn't be operating your cell phone on your track hoe. Well, I already paid attention to where I was going, and I'm still going in the same direction, so it'll be fine. We just need to make a slight right, real slow, nice and easy. We don't want to crush nothing, not even somebody's toes or pet kitty cat, anything. We just want this to ease along through here, nice and slow like. But yeah, took me 14 different forevers just to get the rigging all rigged up. But I got the rigging all rigged up and I got her up in the air and she's somewhat level. On my way to the back end of that truck and when I get there I'm going to probably knock off till somebody comes over here to spot me on putting this thing down because I'm a little too, I'm a little tired of in and out of that truck bed and up and down the track on this track hose. so here we go. Alright, I didn't get the video of the whole thing, setting it down and all that good stuff, but basically took that track hoe and set this bed on this frame. But, <clears throat> I've still got to cut that loose on both sides because I have new pieces to go in there that actually match that hinge. So, that's what I'm doing now. I gotta clean it all up with a needle scaler, get it washed off with the wash tip, make sure ain't nothing busted around it with you know the extra heat from the wash tip and then I can pick the back end of the bed up a little bit and use the bucket on the track hoe to push the bed forward far enough to get it where it ought to be and stick the new hinges in their holes put the pins in and all that good stuff just gonna take a second here to answer a question before somebody gets a chance to ask it Y'all see all them little holes in that, what used to be a weld? That, in a nutshell, is the reason why I'm always out stick welding and not running wire on everything. The wind got to the feller that put that on at the Oxbody factory and the quality control people didn't care enough to make him go back and cut his garbage back out and redo it. So here I am having to cut it out and it'll get redone when I put the new hinge on. It's amazing to me that it lasted as long as it did, but here we are. All right, y'all, back out here messing with this old KW, the one that dumped the bed off. And I've almost got the bed back where it needs to be. I got about two, two and a half inches to go yet further forward but I got the old Kamata pillar crane slash hole digger hooked up to it I cleaned the, all the old hinge off and a whole bunch of the frame, uh, paint off the bed frame yesterday and by that time I had skipped lunch and it was time to go home so I went on home so that's the stage I'm at right now. I just gotta finish pushing this thing a little bit further forward, get it back where it used to set, and then I can just pick the back end of it up and put the other part of the hinge in place with its new pins and all that good stuff. And then I can set the bed back down, center the hinge assembly, make sure everything's gonna work right, and start welding it up. All right, let me turn the light on. There's the light. So. I got the bed where it needs to be as far as front to back goes and I'm positioning this hinge system so the critical thing is you make sure that the hinge assembly is centered side to side on the frame 
and then make sure that each side of the hinge assembly is the same distance back from the cab as the other side that way when they go to raise the bed up the bed raises square with the frame of the truck and everything's all nice and hunky-dory so you found yourself a good measuring point up yonder looks like that cross member is going to do real nice for me that cross member right there that you can barely see anyways i'm going to measure back from that cross member to this hinge assembly and make sure I get the same measurement on both sides. And then I'll double check and make sure it's still centered in the frame and keep bouncing back and forth between all four measuring points and all four uh, measurement amounts until I get the same story at both points on the side to side and the same story at both points on the front to back. Pretty simple. I just can't do it while I'm videoing because I'm having to use a hammer and that is requiring me to kind of hold myself up in one spot and beat in another spot. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And once I get it dialed in exactly where it needs to be, I'll take and secure the hinges to the uh, bed frame of the truck and then start welding this thing up. All right, I got everything centered up exactly where it ought to be and all that good stuff. So I'm fixing to get up under there and weld, but I figured I'd show y'all this right quick. There are uses for bungee cords. Instead of having to take this fella's mud flaps off and fight with a bunch of rusted out bolts with a bunch of rock, dirt, rock dust all over them and all that junk. Just drill a hole in the bottom side of the mud flap, hook your bungee cord up to where his tailgate chains goes on both sides, and there you are. Now the mud flaps are out of the way. And you'd be amazed at how much heartache and misery that'll save you in the process of doing all this. All right, now it's time for a little short story and a short review on these particular rods. A while back, I had a little issue with Lincoln Excalibur 7018 rods. And I ran out of 8th inch Excaliburs, so I figured I'd try out some different kind of rods. The best thing about these particular rods is the container they come in. There is absolutely nothing good about these rods. These rods are incredibly annoying to weld with. You get a lot of arc blow, a lot of slag running around in front of your puddle. They stick real easily because of the slag that runs around in front of your puddle. Now, basically, you're spending 30 bucks for a plastic tube. These are junk. Won't be buying any more of these. All right, y'all. <clears throat> Obviously, no matter how much you do grinding, surface prepping, all that fancy good stuff, it's never quite enough. So I got a little trash right there I gotta clean up, but that ain't no big deal. Anyways, I got the bed part of the hinges attached to the bed and I have very securely blocked the back side of this bed up so that it don't fall on my head while I'm playing with this. And I've given myself plenty of room to weld the top side of both them gussets and the top side of the frame rail and all that good stuff. So all that's left to do now is go to town on burning some rods. Weld them hinges all the way on. Weld that hinge assembly all the way on. Then I can drop this thing back down, stick the pins back in it, throw some grease at it, and then I can continue on to the rest of the busted up, cracked up places. That's just a small example. There's a lot more. Remember this bed came off this truck. The cylinder pin at the top in the doghouse came loose while he had a full load of, uh, I believe he was hauling uh, pug mix, which is just wet crusher run rock. Uh, I believe that's what he was hauling. Anyways, he went to dump it and it raised, he, the cylinder raised the bed all the way up 
but it didn't hold the bed to keep it from going further up after the load shifted to the back side of the truck. So that pin came loose out of the top of the cylinder and allowed the bed to just fall backwards off the back end of the truck. I think I got a picture I used for a thumbnail kind of shows that, but anyways, this bed was standing on its tailgate, sticking straight up in the air like a Saturn V rocket. And this is, yeah, it destroyed all the hinge assembly, so that's why I'm here. Fun stuff. All right, now, obviously I got the bed back on it, got the pins back in it. Sorry I couldn't catch all of that on video, but I couldn't find a place to prop my phone up where I could effectively video the entire procedure. But basically I took the track hose, stuck the bed back on the truck, used the track hose to pick up just the bed of the truck, or at the back of the truck, and blocked that up real good where I could have easy access to weld everything up, and then set it back down, stuck the pins back in it, and now I'm working on other broken spots in the bed. There's one right up in there. There's another one right over there on this side. And then on the other side, it's pretty much the same story. And you know, once I get all of them welded up, I'll take and tighten the keeper bolts on them pins. Then I can raise the bed up. Oh yeah, I hook the uh, bed cylinder back up too. So that's all good. Dog house is back closed up. Uh, yeah. So I'm just back to fixing cracks on this thing now. All right. After being all crouched down and gravel chewing on my kneecaps, I decided I'd just go on ahead and bite the bullet and raise this thing up and make sure it's going to do like it ought to. And it is going to do like it ought to. So now that it's raised up and I got a little bit more headroom, I'm going to get back to burning some rods on it. Sorry about the wind. Alright. Now that I've got done acting like I'm a biscuit and sopping up all that gravy. Here comes the wind again. Anyways. Being that I ain't no 12 foot tall. That's not as far as it is. I can reach the wheel. So, I've still got that to do, and each one of them pieces of pipe has got some cracks around each end of it, so i got to get them. Then, I can ease this bed back down, finish trimming the ends of the frame up, and put the cap plates back on that. Also got to get that old pin boss out from in between the uh, uh, tailgate latches there. And once I do all of that, I can weld the bottom side of the tailgate up and make sure it ain't got no more cracks in it. If you or anybody you know owns a dump truck, then you know exactly what happened here. That originally, looked about like that, and then it cracked just like that, and then some hack just came in and threw a big old glitter weld downhill on it with a wire machine. So that's all filled with pinholes and other sorts of trash and not so goodliness, which makes it that much more fun for me. Maybe y'all will be able to see what I got going on. Sorry about the wind. Sorry if I ain't getting a good shot. That's the best I can do for you.
right there is what that looks like. No judge up like said too harshly, it wasn't exactly easy to get to, and this wind's moving about 20, 25 mile an hour. This bed's swaying back and forth like any chair that Rosie O'Donnell's ever sat in. Well, I got that one done, and this side of it done, and I'm too short to reach the next one, so I lowered the bed down a little bit. Just happened to glance, that little fellow there's busted, and I didn't even see it, and I just fixed that. So, I'm gonna fix that, and then I'm gonna fix that. It's busted around the outside of it, so, yeah. I'm just gonna go on ahead and fix all that, and then get up in there and do that other piece of pipe. Then I can ease this thing the rest of the way down and finish the hinge project. Just got to take a second to do a little graphing right quick. I know I'm always saying don't be welding downhill on thick metal. That right there is exactly why. You really can't see it all that good, but maybe. Yeah, you can tell that pipe just goes straight into that piece of plate and their weld ain't even got no meat to it. It's the entire weld is undercut. And that's because they pulled it downhill with a MIG. That right there is the reason why it broke right there. There's not enough meat in that corner to hold this piece of pipe to that piece of plate. And yeah, them two pieces of pipe hold these pieces of box tubing vert vertical up under here. So, yeah, when they're throwing boulders and stuff like that in the bed of these trucks, it's trying to spread these two pieces of box tubing away from each other the whole time. Not only did they fail a visual test, they also failed a giant hammer test. Now, by some people's standards and some structural steel welding codes, that little old, I'm gonna figure, quarter inch bead that I put on that should be more than sufficient to secure that piece of pipe that's got about a 3 16th inch wall to that piece of plate that's 3 16ths or quarter, I can't remember. But where they don't get it is this is going down the road, bouncing up and down, vibrating, all that good stuff, and it's getting rock thrown on it all the time. Alright y'all, I got the bed back down and I'm back down here at the back side of this thing. I cut the excess off the ends of the frame rails for I remembered that y'all didn't get to see that I was going to do that. Or maybe you did, I don't know. Anyways, I got to mount that light bracket. Pretty simple. I'm just going to hold it up there and tack the head to the bolts to that piece of angle. Be one over here and one over there. And once they're tacked up, I'll unbolt it and weld them on good and solid where they ain't gonna fall off. And then I'll stick it all back up there and bolt it up. Then I gotta put the cap plates on the ends of the frame rails and clean up where I got into the bed frame rail a little bit with a torch cutting the old hinge off and clean up where they had a bunch of pin holes and their welds on the original bed hinges. And then I gotta crack right there I got to finish welding out and then under the truck will be done after that and I can move on to the crack on the bottom side of the tailgate it goes almost all the way across you know I wish there was another name for these metallic separations because I'm afraid if I keep saying crack old Hunter Biden might show up I don't need him around here. Well, there she is. All new front mud flap mounts. All because of that little plastic tank right there. It's a real good spot to put a plastic tank right beside some tires. Anyways, all that's all welded up. Tailgate's fixed. This one's over with for me. Now the mechanics can get a hold of it and 
hook that air cylinder back up and put all the lights and all the little doodads and switches and fancy stuff back on it and then the driver can go back out and tear it up again.